First of all, thank you all for coming here today. As you know, Connecticut is facing yet another fiscal challenge in the face of having to pass a budget. And let's be clear, we need a budget. But we don't need a budget that we're going to be back here every six months making changes. We need a budget that's going to restore education funding. We need a budget that's going to move the state forward. We need a budget that won't increase taxes. We need a budget that's going to implement structural changes to ensure that from this time forward, we could always do better for the state of Connecticut. We tried to work with the Democratic leadership. We found an impasse. The House Republicans and the Senate Republicans have been in lockstep. We agree on our path. We know which way to go. And let's be absolutely clear and make no mistake. We are ready, willing, and able to put forth a budget on Thursday up on the board for a vote. We also believe that if that budget is going to be called, we expect that to be a number of Democrats who would look favorably upon our budget. And we urge a vote, a vote on our budget. And I'm going to turn it over to Representative Claritas for some of the things we're doing in our budget. As Senator Fasano mentioned, one of the major issues we have had in budget negotiations for the past several years is the fact that we need to make structural changes to the state of Connecticut. Now, I know you may hear that phrase and you get sick of hearing it, as we probably get sick of saying it, but we cannot look at numbers in a budget and make decisions on what we think the direction of the state of Connecticut should be without first knowing that the structural changes would be made because those are main reasons why the state is in the mess it's in. Structural changes would include spending caps, bonding caps, prioritized progress, our plan to move the state of Connecticut forward with transportation funding in a fiscally responsible way, not just throwing money at the problem. I don't know any of us who wouldn't support a billion dollars being put into transportation. The problem is we do not have a billion dollars. We don't have a billion cents. So we have to look at the reality of where we stand and how we can prioritize the progress of the state of Connecticut. And one of those things we can all agree on is transportation. We look at municipalities. We know they are drowning in unfunded mandates. And they have many, many tax issues going on. We want to help municipalities control their own destiny and not be reliant on the state of Connecticut to the extent they are now. And one of the ways we do that is by prevailing wage reform. We know that we have not supported the CBAC agreement in the form that it was in. But we also know that that is the reality in which we live in now, and we have to address that reality. We have made $600 million in structural changes to this budget since CBAC was passed to give you a budget that does not have tax increases, does not have sales tax increases, does not have hospital tax increases, does not have income tax increases, and does not put teachers' pension onto cities and towns. We have reduced taxes in a few ways. One is a tax exemption for Social Security. Retirees are being punished for retiring in this state. We want to phase in the ability to exempt that tax. We have felt very strongly for a long time now about the property tax credit in the state of Connecticut. We restored that back to $200, where it is presently. That is one of the main things that helps the middle class in this state, and we are in full agreement that that should be restored. Now, if you remember, since Governor Malloy took over, it started out at $500. We are restoring it and keeping it where it is now. We see a lot of talk and hear a lot about education funding. We cannot allow the governor or anyone else in this building to punish cities and towns and our children the way they have. We reject the governor's devastating spending cuts. We have taken into account the court cases of CJF and Meskel. And we believe that there's a better way to do this by looking at enrollment, at poverty, at wealth, and, and English language issues. We have put more money into ECS than the governor 
and then the Democrats in the House and the Senate in this building. Because we believe it's that important. We believe this needs to be revamped. We believe that there should be a new formula. And we believe that the group of shareholders and stakeholders that are part of this great education that we have in this state need to be in that table. This is not the education of 30 or 40 years ago. It is not just about ECS. It's about ECS, special ed, magnet schools, charter schools, alliance districts, priority district. There is not a one-size-fits-all answer to education in this state. We recognize that. All those people should be at the table moving forward to find the right answer. Thank you. In addition, we believe it's very important about our core social services. So we put money in for care for kids. We protect the funding of the SAGA programs. We support uh, the disabled residents who are unable to work. We fund the school-based health clinics, the family resource centers, and we fund the mental health and addiction service programs that we all need in this state. With respect to seniors, we fund the Meals on Wheels program. We make sure that the personal needs allowance is intact and the Connecticut Home Care program. And with respect to DDS adults, we make sure that when they're done with their education that they have day services for that time period. Those are things that have been dropped. Those are things that we don't see funded and other programs, we believe those are core functions of government and we need to fund them as a priority. We also look to reduce the size of government by getting rid of certain employment positions. One of the other things we looked at was the CBAC deal came and went. After 2027, we need to look at structural changes that we need to take place. For example, once uh, OPM came up with this suggestion a while ago, which is the COLAs will not be for retirees, this would be after 2027, until it's funded at 80%. We would uh, put in there no overtime into pensions. And we would ask that the contributions go up to the 7%. That would give savings in 2018 and 2019 and the reason why we didn't come out with the budget earlier is we're waiting for the actuary to run those numbers so we had solid numbers. We believe we have a budget that is real. We believe we have a budget that can go forward. We have a belief that puts Connecticut on the right track. And we are sending a letter to the leaders that, as you know, in this building, when you're in special session, in order to get a matter heard, you either have to do a strike all amendment or you have an emergency certification. We are writing to the two leaders because the two leaders had told the press and us that if Senator Looney had a budget, even if the House was not in agreement, they would sign an emergency, Joe would sign an emergency certification that would allow that budget to run in the Senate. Senator Looney has also made that promise to the Speaker that if the Speaker had a budget, even if he had not signed on, he would sign that emergency certification. We are sending a letter to the leaders asking to give the same courtesy to Representative Claritas as the leader of her caucus and to myself as the leader of our caucus that the same privilege that they have to run a budget as an emergency certification on Thursday. There's no reason why we cannot vote up or down on budgets on Thursday. I'll take any questions.